Okay, so there are, as we just talked about, there are three different dividend regimes, right? Three different regimes under which firms, uh, or, or under which we can value a share of stock. Okay, so uh, maybe a better way to say it is, we can only use this model, this methodology, to value a share of stock if a firm pays dividends like the following three regimes. Okay. Uh, now, the first one is what we call constant dividends. Or zero growth. Okay. And in the constant dividend case, like we talked about, the dividend is the same forever. Right? So if we have time down here, and let's say the firm pays a $1 dividend, it would pay the same $1 dividend in every period forever. So D1 would be a dollar, and D2 would be a dollar, and D3 and D4 all would be a dollar. Okay. And we know then that the price per share in this regime is the present value of the future dividends, and that this is a simple perpetuity So the present value of a perpetuity, so we write the price as P0 is equal to the present value today, that's zero. And the present value of a simple perpetuity is the first cash flow divided by the rate, the discount rate. And here we'll rewrite that as D1 divided by the discount rate to denote that the cash flow that we're receiving is a dividend. Okay. So we would solve this problem by dividing one by R, right? whatever R might be. And that would be the price of this share of stock. Okay? So if we have constant dividends, we have a relatively straightforward problem uh, in front of us. Um, we just take the present value of the perpetuity of those dividends and we have the price of the share of stock. Now, the second regime is called constant growth. And separately from constant dividends, constant growth has dividends growing at a constant rate. Okay. So instead of saying the same, they are increasing or decreasing, but they are doing so at the same rate. Okay. So again, if we have time here, we have one, two, three, four, five periods. Right. So if our first dividend was a dollar, and let's say what we call the dividend growth rate is uh, uh, denoted as G, and G is, let's say, 10%. Okay. So if the first dividend is a dollar and the dividends grow at a 10% rate, then we calculate the growth rate like this. The second dividend is equal to the first dividend times one plus the growth rate, which means that the second dividend is equal to a dollar times one plus 10% or one dollar and ten cents. So D2 is one dollar and ten cents. And then the third dividend is equal to the second dividend times one plus the growth rate. And the fourth dividend is equal to the third dividend times one plus the growth rate and so on and so forth. So 1.10 times one plus 10% gives us a dividend of 121. 
and a fourth dividend of 132 and a fifth dividend of 145 right. and so we have a dividend that is growing at a constant rate now this is a growing perpetuity and so the price of a share of stock in a constant growth regime is the present value of a growing perpetuity and that is the first cash flow divided by the discount rate minus the growth rate and again we will just rewrite this to denote that the cash flow is the dividend so next period's dividend the first dividend minus the growth rate right so the price today at time zero is equal to the next period's dividend at time one divided by the discount rate minus the growth rate and in this formulation we call this model the dividend growth model and this is the central model via which we are going to value shares of stock okay now the last regime that we will learn how to value in this class non-constant growth or what we will term sometimes i will term uh, two-stage growth and this gives us a little more flexibility in terms of valuing the firm by giving the uh, potential for the dividend to have two different regimes okay so for instance We could have a dividend regime, a two-stage regime, where the first stage is a, where the first stage is a constant dividend stage. So let's say for the first five years of the firm's life, the dividends are paid at a dollar. per year. And then we have a break and following that the dividends increase at 10% per year right so then the next series of dividends they increase at 10% a year and the increase goes on forever okay. so this is an example of non-constant growth. We have a growth rate of 0% for a few years and then an increasing growth rate forever after that. The key uh, to us being able to value a share of in a non-constant regime is that after the switch, whatever, whatever the second regime is, the firm either needs to have constant dividends Or constantly growing dividends hmm. so in other words some other examples right we may have for instance uh, a firm that has uh, constant growing dividends and then after a while switches to a constant dividend. Or we may have a firm that has shrinking dividends and then after a while switches to a constant dividend. Or we may have a firm that has shrinking dividends and then its fortunes reverse and it has increasing dividends, right? The key is that in all of these, 
after the regime switch, uh, we are either constant, constant or constantly growing or potentially constantly shrinking. Um, we could even have, say, uh, an example like this, where the first regime is random. So we have dividends all over the place, and then we have constant or constantly growing, right? This is also an example of a two-stage model that we could solve using the methodologies that we're going to lay out uh, in these later examples, okay? Now, uh, I presumably you can all see uh, the limitations of these models. Uh, the first one being that you must have a firm that's paying dividends in order to use them. The second one being that uh, it only allows for a very strict uh, or maybe restricted uh, dividend regime, right? So the firm either needs to be paying constant, constantly growing, or have some two-stage model uh, where it eventually becomes a constant or constantly growing dividend. Uh, and while I show you some examples of this actually being the case, um, that so th these aren't super restrictive. Uh, in, in fact, uh, the dividend growth model is, is fairly appropriate for lots of firms that try to maintain a constantly growing dividend. Um, it, uh, it is restrictive and there are, uh, um, and the, the reason why we don't, why we learn this model is because of its uh, mathematical simplicity. Um, there are models that are more complicated that allow us to solve for uh, dividends of any type or kind. 